I just like fell head over heels in love with her style of music, her musicality, her musicianship, her professionalism, her like, she's, I mean, she's an epic mom. She's like, you know, this tour de force. And I just, yeah, I, I, it was like instant respect. You know what I mean? Maria thinks long and deep and, and in great detail. And uh, as a writer, um, it's easy for her to, to, to get into the, 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 the grain, granular details of, of things. I mean, she spends a lot of time and that kind of speaks to her as a person. She, 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 it, when she commits to something, she commits to it. And, and, um, she's, she's, um, she works like a fiend. She works very, very hard. I mean, she, she just won a, a prize for, for her short opera. And, uh, I mean, it's her first opera and, and, for to do it during a pandemic writing an opera during a pandemic and winning a prize for it i mean that's pretty doggone impressive and i can't i couldn't be prouder of her that's that's the truth composer pianist writer and educator dr maria thompson corley was born in jamaica and raised in alberta canada her grandmother studied piano at the New England Conservatory of Music and returned to Bermuda, where she taught privately for many years. Maria herself began music and piano lessons with her mother at the age of four, along with her three siblings. So I left Jamaica before I was two. Um, my dad was a dentist and um, he had gotten a scholarship from the Jamaican government and he went there, you know, to help repay the scholarship and practice. But my mom was not very comfortable. In the 1960s, there was a lot of um, unrest around elections, um, but with actual <laughs> violence. So um, Canada was where they met. And so we ended up in this little town, um, not immediately, but you know, where I grew up uh, was Leduc, Alberta, which is outside of Edmonton, Alberta, the capital city of Alberta. My mom actually uh, was my first piano teacher. She was, um, her mom was, uh, a student at the New England Conservatory. And um, so, you know, that came down. She taught in Bermuda. My mom is Bermudian. And so um, we all learned, the four kids learned to play the piano. And so it was something that I was very passionate about. My brother was three years, a little bit more than three years older than me. And I heard him having lessons. And I guess when I was two, I wanted to take lessons. And my mom, maybe wait till I was four, but I was just, you know, really, really, really into playing the piano. And Edmonton, uh, being the capital city, there was a fair amount of musical um, activity there. You know, the Edmonton Symphony, we would go um, take turns going to the symphony with my parents who had seasons tickets and there were different things. It wasn't just classical music. Um, you know, we were exposed to, um, we would have this heritage festival. Um, and uh, so, you know, the steel, steel band and um, my parents made sure that we did some things related to knowing Jamaican folk songs and just things like that. And, you know, my dad was into reggae. I don't know that my dad was really into classical music before he met my mom. So we learned um, in my house anyway, we're very familiar with, um, you know, Sarah Vaughan was one of his favorites and those sort of jazz singers. So um, a really eclectic musical experience, but certainly there were musical opportunities and competitions, um, you know, for the youth. In fact, my parents started the Leduc um, Music Festival. The festival, founded by Dr. Lloyd Thompson, has grown from a small event with only piano classes and one adjudicator to an organization that has hosted thousands of students from the County of Leduc in duets, large instrumental bands, speech students, musical theater performers, and rock musicians. During her childhood in Alberta, Dr. Thompson Corley could be seen in piano lessons developing her earliest compositions in homemade films created and written by her brother and playing piano in her local church community, to name a few. Well, um, actually, I was reminded um, that the first things I composed were, you know, my, my brother, who um, passed on in 1988, was a very talented um, actor. And um, he was interested in directing. And, you know, so when we were kids, he had a Super 8 camera and he would write scripts and then, you know, 
round up the neighborhood kids and you know direct these movies. And so he asked me to write um, film scores. I will, my mom will remember the exact things and I won't. So I think eight, somewhere in the eight to 10 range anyway, um, all through, I graduated from college. Uh, her name was Alexandra Munn. And so, you know, she was obviously a big influence on my musical life because I studied with her during those formative years. From the age of eight through the end of her bachelor's degree from the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Dr. Thompson Corley studied with pianist and professor of music, Alexandra Munn, a graduate of the Juilliard School of Music. After her initial studies in Edmonton, she went on to receive both her master's and doctorate degrees in piano performance at the Juilliard School, working with renowned Hungarian pianist, Georgi Sándor. For two years, Dr. Thompson Corley was the only pianist admitted into Juilliard's doctoral program and was chosen to represent her alma mater in a tour of Central America where she gave performances and master classes. We were doing a recital in Baltimore, I shall never forget it. We were doing a recital in Baltimore and uh, it was a lovely recital, but in my zeal to put everything together, I'd forgotten to put together a, a, an encore. I said, oh, Maria, what, what are we going to do? I said, well, gosh, I mean, I could reprise something from, from the program, or I could sing a spiritual uh, a cappella, or we could, we could improvise something. She says, well, I, I can improvise a spiritual. I said, okay. And so we, we worked out, Lord, I want to be a Christian. And um, it, would, it went over really, really well. <laughs> it wasn't a dry eye in the house. And I said, well, you know you have to write that down, right? <laughs> and I was nudging her. Um, right after that, I started um, asking various comp composers to write on poetry of County Cullen. And, um, and I nudged her and I said, don't you want to write for this? And she says, "Well, I'm well." She 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 wasn't sure that she, how confident she felt uh, as a composer. I said, "I, mm, someone with your gifts, with your 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 complete knowledge of the piano, and your understanding of voice. She really understood voice because she was married to a singer, by the way, and she had played for many singers. And she herself has a lovely singing voice." Um, that that marriage of and the fact that you are so original as an author as you know a, a um, church musician and um, and a solo pianist she 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 has such a, such a wide variety of interests I said I can't imagine that you wouldn't be really really interesting as a composer.
you know, I, I mainly thought of myself as an arranger uh, and I've sort of fallen into it. Like it wasn't something that I thought, you know, I did arrangements and people really liked them. And um, first of all, they were mainly choral arrangements for, you know, I've been a church musician for a long time, even from when I was a teenager at the, my home church. And so um, I started arranging things for special occasions like Christmas or something, you know, some special arrangement. Um, and then the composing aspect of it, I think the first time I tried to write an art song was because my friend Daryl Taylor. So I, I met Daryl by chance um, ages ago. And um, so I had given him my arrangement of Steal Away, which I did for my ex-husband when we were students at Juilliard. And um, I think it got buried under a pile of stuff, but then maybe 10 years later, he found it and liked it and recorded it. Um, so then he urged me to compose some songs by, uh, to text by County Cullen, because he was asking all these other people to do it, including like Adolphus Hale Stork and, you know, these really famous people who I was like, uh, okay, you know, so I wrote three art songs and, um, it was weird because why I would had such trepidation, I don't know why I put like such a big weight on the idea because I guess you, you know, you have this fear people won't like it kind of thing. But, um, you know, I never had trouble writing melodies. So I don't know why I would have had trouble writing a song, but yeah, it just seemed like just a big thing. Anyway, he liked one of them enough um, that he used it to open a series of concerts when he was traveling, um, you know, he did a tour and he, it was Simon the Serenian Speaks. And so, um, that really gave me a boost. Dr. Thompson Corley has composed and arranged choral music with pieces commissioned and recorded by groups such as the Florida A&M University Concert Choir, Muse, Cincinnati's Women's Choir, and the California State University East Bay. She has also written solo voice music for artists like countertenor Daryl Taylor and sopranos Louise Toppin and Randy Jones. It is fun to write things with a particular person's voice in mind, you know, especially if it's someone who I know, you know, like for example, Daryl, you know, I know exactly kind of how he approaches performing and, you know, I know whatever I give him is gonna be done with just the utmost care of emotional expression and, you know, makes you really want to do something that will allow uh, a wide range of emotional um, content. In 2018, one of my friends, I sent her this rant. It was like an email rant about this guy I have known for years. And it was an on and off sort of like, what is going on here kind of relationship? Like, does he like me? Do I like him? What's going on? So I sent her this email rant and she said, you should set this to music. You know, she's a soprano and I don't know if she was serious. I mean, it was just dramatic, you know? So I, I chopped it in three and deleted some of it and, you know, edited a bit. And I made it into these three heart riddles, which she learned. I don't even know. I, I mean, I, I sent them to Daryl. Yeah, I sent them to Daryl. He encouraged me to um, write some more so I could get into the Nats competition because there's a, a time element that it has to be a certain length. And I ended up mining my own poems because um, that's another story. But anyway, you know, because I didn't want to pay the rights for anything. So I <laughs> just <laughs> picked out some poems and wrote a total of 10 songs. It was really bold because, again, you know, as someone who wasn't necessarily feeling 100% comfortable with the idea of being a composer, I mean, obviously, I wasn't writing it as poetry, so there's no metrical anything. So for me to, to decide that I was going to set, and I've done that several times since then, but, you know, like as a, a challenge, and I called it Three Heart Riddles, but I only after I wrote it realized that, wow, I started each one with an actual question which is perfect for the heart riddles, but I didn't realize that I had done that until afterwards. So there you go, serendipity, but. Interesting, because I brought, we talked about this in February. Um, I brought up the, uh, the Buddhist proverb about holding water in your hand and how like the Buddha says uh, that true love is like holding water in your hands. Like the tighter you grasp it, the further it goes away. Like. So she was like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't, she didn't like allude. That's what she was talking about, but I, that's what it meant for me. You know what I mean? There are very similar, like 
musical thematic things that happen throughout the entire thing. Um, a lot of intervallic movement, a lot of like uh, really uh, sometimes pseudo sexual and like intimate times in the poetry. Um, and, and again, because she is the poet and the composer, there's this like really harmonious marriage of both the text and the music constantly throughout. I know exactly the part and it's the part where it's like, I wander through this pathless wilderness, emptier. And then it goes back into the theme. I don't know, something about that transitional moment it feels so like um, unwritten, you know. Like the rest of the rest of the music is all very sort of like up and down these big long lines, and it's sort of building without actually building any structure. And then in the very center of the piece, because this is the thing with a lot of song repertoire, you know, it feels like it starts somewhere and then it builds up and then it dies down. But the long goodbye just kind of feels like it's like pockets of space of just like emptiness. And I felt like that moment was so um, relatable, I guess. Like uh, it really struck me in my, in my experiences, you know, this is, this is art, right? Like in my experiences of having to say goodbye to someone I love or to have to, um, you know, watch the end of a relationship, you know, it felt so appropriate and so, yeah, artistic. So, if that makes sense. Today, Dr. Thompson Corley leads an active and busy concert life. 
making up half of Duo Chiaroscuro with cellist Sarah Mayle, the two endeavored to include silent optional concerts for people on the autism spectrum and others who may not typically attend classical concerts because of difficulties with remaining still. Obviously, I mean, if you have a certain mindset where you have a high standard and, you know, you, you think music is something that is, um, I don't know if noble is the word, that, you know, there's a certain elevation, a certain respect that you have for the whole musical enterprise, then, you know, you, you don't approach it lightly. On the other hand, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I know Duparc wrote more than 11 songs or whatever it is, right? So, um, you know, I mean, it's okay, I think, to write something and find out that, you know, or, or people revise things all the time, like they go back to their earlier works and they see things. So, but what right, it's sort of like the idea of what right do I have to be a composer? Like, have I earned the right to be a composer? But, you know, I mean, like, yeah, you have, I mean, like, you know, there's not a specific dues that one has to pay. If you were able to make up music, then you're a composer, whether it's great or whether it's considered not to be great, the act of making up music makes you a composer. So, you know. 